For a while, I have been wanted to work with LangGraph, the library that's made by the same guy that made LangChain. LangGraph is a relatively new library. I mean, it not even have been a year since it have been released, and it have the ability to work with LangChain and integrate LangChain inside its app or logic and make even more powerful agent and retriever augmented apps. So today I'm gonna start with trying to understand what LangGraph on how it work and build a corrective rag with it or a C rag as they say. But before we jump in any code today, I wanna explain as simple as it possible what is LangGraph and what the key concept of it and the functionality inside it. If you read the blog of LangGraph that published by LangChain, you will find out that LangGraph is built on top of LangChain and it's completely integrated inside the LangChain ecosystem. So it's not a separate thing, it's actually like an extension that will allow LangChain to create more powerful functions. When working with LangGraph, we need to focus in the key concept of it, which in, in we can summarize it in three things. The first thing is the start to graph, as you can see the code of it here, over here. LangGraph revolve around the concept of the stateful graph where each node over here in the graph represent a step in your logic. And the graph maintain the state in, and pass it around and update it as the function progress. The second part, which is the core of this graph, is the nodes. Node R is like the building logos. Each node basically represents a step and define nodes to perform specific tasks, just like processing input, making decision, or interacting with external APIs, or fetching data, or something like this. And finally, last one is edges. And edges are actually have two types. The first one is the normal types. We're going to see the code, the both of the normal types and conditional types of edges. But edges assembly is connecting the node in your graph, defining the flow of the logic. And like graph support the conditional edges and allowing you to dynamically determine the next node to execute. For example, as you can see here, this node have two different branches or two different edges. The first one, in terms of, let's say here, uh, it's yes, it go to C. If it no, it go to B. And finally, one of them we're gonna compute to the final answer and compile it to the end, which is the last thing that you have to write when you're working, working with graph logic is the builder compiler. With that, I think this is a very simple and true to how the lang graph work. Right now, we can jump into our code. For this code, I am using Grok, the Lama 37 b model from Grok, and Tivoli AI, the API web search that allows us to connect LLMs to the web. You can go there and register and claim your API keys. The first thing that we're going to do is set up the environment. Then Create fetch the data and create embedding from this data using open source. You can use any embedding model that you want. It can be GPT-4 or Gemini, even install Gemini here, I think. Yep. And set up the prompt and the large language model that you use. The data processing is in the kitchen rewriter, which will take our kitchen and write it better. The web search setup, because we need to access the web for this rank. And the graph state and its type and the build graph, which is just explained in this image, which is this basically. And finally, we're gonna ask it a couple of questions. We're gonna need language chain, of course, tick token, language chain, grok. As you can see, there is a lot of language chain here. We're gonna use Chroma DB to store the embedding, Devilly, Bison, and language chain, hugging face. And finally, we need, of course, language graph. The first thing that we need to access, uh, give it to our code, is the ABIs. Key, the ABI keys, a grok and devilly. And here you can bot it without no one seeing it. The second thing is the data. This actually blog post is coming from Leilena Wang, which is one of the best that write about machine learning and LLMs in very detailed way. So you can see some of it works over here about prompt engineering and agent and all the stuff. It's very good. I think it's one of the most recommended blogs that I got when I was starting diving in machine learning. We here setting the embedding and the Chrome DB and text splitter for our text. We're gonna fetch all this URL 
and tick split them using the tick splitter in chunks. And the embedding that I'm using is from Hagen Face. It's recommended by Language Chain to use the big base en and store it in Chroma DB. Right now we can set up our LLM. The, the first this is the first step is done. Right now we can look, take a look to the second step, which putting the large language model that we're gonna use and the system prompt that we will use with this model. I'm using the shad rock with the lms 37 b and this is the prompt is provided by LangGraph example. I'm gonna leave the link of course for it in description. Here it here it set up the how we're gonna retrieve the documents relevant to the question that we're going to access. The whole mission of this logic in, of the grader, the grade com documents, it will take the questions that we will ask and look inside our documents and see if this question answer will be inside or basically relative to the document that we'll have. It will answer with either yes or no. So it's simple as this. The second step we have is pitching the prompt from Hagen Face for this rank and set up language chain to work with it. As you can see here, this is the prompt is coming from Hagen Face, the rank prompt and the large language model and the formatted document. And we give this stuff to language chain. And as you can see here, the most fam famous function for language chain is invoke, which is a simple rank as you can see. The second part is also very simple. It take the question that we ask and rewrite it and make it even better. As you can see here, this prompt, you go a question rewriter that converts an input question to a better version that is optimized for the web search. Look to look at the input and try reason re, uh, to reason about the underlying cinematic intent and meaning. Finally, the last piece of our language chain function is the web search. We are using the typically search results. We only take in the first three. Here comes the length graph logic. We start with the state graph, which is here. The graph state. It represents the state of our graph and you give it attribute. And the attribute is a questions, a generation, and web search, and the document. And all the stuff is the types of the attribute that we have. And we're going to right now basically see the code for each one. The question, the generation, the web search, and the document. As you can see, the first one is the retrieve, which will basically retrieve the document that we have. The retrieve document, the arguments that it takes, the current graph state, the, what it returned, and each one will have arguments and what it returned in this function. The second one is generate. The third one, the grid document, determine whether the retrieve document are relevant to the questions or not. Transform a query, which transforms a query to produce a better questions, which rewriting the question logic. The web search, decide to generate, which determine whether to generate an answer or regenerate the question, which is very details and you have a lot of control on top of what you're doing inside your nodes and your basically your entire graph, not like link chain. So final thing is building the graph. Second step is the building blocks, is adding the nodes. Of course, the state graph take the graph state that we created in the code above. And here the nodes is define what node we want to create and the function of it. The relative, each one of the, the function over here is basically passed to one of these nodes. Here we're defining the edges, which is basically the connection between the nodes. As you can see here, set entry point for retrieve which we always start with the one this first one add another edge the grid document and here another type of edge i talked about in the first of the, uh, the beginning of the video is the conditional edges it's not existing in this image but yeah it's the code is over here it decide if this question is good enough or it will regenerate the question Another edge is transform query, which connected to web search, and web search is connected to generate. And finally, from generate, the last thing we're gonna do is ending and compile the entire workflow that we'll have for this graph. That's it. This is the graph is done. 
most of the stuff you have to basically reuse but the only thing that i should recommend that you change for real is the embedding and what type of model that you work with you can go with whatever model that you want you already have access using language chain to a lot of models is are open source or not open source but that's it the line graph is done right now we can ask it and see how it's work in the background as you can see the first question is what are the type of agent memory which will go this input to send it to our graph here it starts with the first node retrieve and the node is retrieved check the document relevance to the question which basically is the con condition check if this document relevant to the question the grade document relevant document relevant document go to every document and see which one is relevant decision finally is made with a generation and the node that will run after that is grade document and then finally we get to generate and this is basically the end of our graph how it work and give us this answer according to the context the type of agent memory are dynamic memory and self-reflection as mentioned in the paper reflections and autonomous agent with dynamic memory and self-reflection by chin and lab Pash. i think that's his name another question which i kind of hit and miss with it i asked it about what are the type of adversary attacks i asked it about what type of adversary attacks which is here it go inside the graph retrieve all the nodes and generate according to the content there are five approaches to the fi to find adversary inputs to trigger lmms to output something undesired but the specific types of adversary attack are not explicitly mentioned yeah, that is the final answer of it but actually it's mentioned here document ablation gradient based attack jailbreak human read streaming uh, teaming uh, human read teaming model read teaming so yeah it's not perfect i think it's the reason of it is the embedding or the model itself so yeah that's basically how you can build a corrective rag that will correct itself while it's working I'm gonna leave all the code and the links and the blogs to read in the description below so go ahead and grab it and thank you for watching this video i was planning to create also a link graph agent both one in python and one for javascript but this will be in a coming video so thank you for watching this video my name is sam al or simply can call me sam and see you in the next one